If you're wondering about how to use your iPad with your computer to draw and paint in your desktop software, then you definitely want to check out AstroPad. This nifty bit of software turns your iPad into a drawing tablet for your Mac or Windows machine, similar to a little Wacom Cintiq. So you can draw in Photoshop or Krita or sculpt in Blender. It's not the only software that enables this, but I feel like AstroPad does it better. Stick around, let's talk about it. Hello, Ryan here with another art tech video. So it's been a little while since the last one because we've been traveling for a bit. During that time, I actually slimmed down on some of my devices to lighten up the luggage, and that include putting away my trusty Intuos Pro. Now, I do have an iPad Pro as well, but generally I prefer to finish up my work sitting at my desk working in Photoshop with my Windows laptop, but with my main drawing tablet in storage, what to do? That's where AstroPad comes in. Now I can have the best of both worlds with the iPad. I can have that portability that lets me paint on the go wherever I am, but then when I get back to the apartment, I can hook it up to my computer and use it sort of like a miniature Wacom Cintiq Pro with multi-touch and everything. And just to note, this is not sponsored. AstroPad didn't ask me to make this video. I just think they've got a really cool product. Initially, AstroPad was only available to Mac users, but last year they had their Windows version in public beta, which they called Project Blue. I was already quite impressed with it back then, but now the official Windows release is out, and that's what we're gonna be checking out here. It was a bit of an interesting road for them getting here. Some brief history tidbits for you. AstroPad was started by these two guys, Matt Rongi and Giovanni Donnelli, back in 2013, long before Sidecar was a thing. It only mirrored your display though, so to turn the iPad into a wireless extended display, they branched out into hardware, developed the Lunar Display dongle. And they had no venture capital with this, it was a fully bootstrapped operation. Then in 2019, Apple came along, Sherlocked the whole thing with the announcement of Sidecar. I'll link below to a podcast on, on all that, but you can imagine what the team must have felt like. You know, here comes this big tech giant with all the resources in the world, waving around a new feature for free that directly competes with what AstroPad has been creating. But sidecars seem to fall a bit short, at least in terms of what the creative professional needs. Of course, this was a bit of a blow, but this prompted AstroPad to concentrate their efforts on cross compatibility and develop their product for Windows. They had great success with the Lunar Display for Windows dongle Kickstarter campaign, and now they've got AstroPad Studio out for it as well. Apart from sidecar, there's also Easy Canvas Duet Display Pro, which do similar things, but it still feels like AstroPad is the superior choice for artists and designers. It stands out in particular with how feature rich it is, but also in in terms of how customizable those features are. How different creative people work varies greatly from one to the next, so having a bit of software that caters towards that is really appealing. So let's get into the meat and axis of all this and talk about those features. First, the display. AstroPad mirrors the display of your Windows or Mac OS system, and it looks really good. This is currently matching up the display ratio of my laptop, and that's why I've got these two black bars on either side. If I push and hold the red button here, it takes me to my display mode and I can switch from full screen to 100%, essentially fitting the display to the height of the iPad and it uses the full area. Then if I need to, I can easily switch back to full screen mode and see my entire interface. Thanks to some fancy proprietary tech they call Liquid, you're getting super crisp image quality and really low latency you can expect a frame rate of about 60 frames per second. You can disable Retina for some improved performance and you'll notice a slight drop in the image quality, but I haven't really felt the need to turn this off while, while drawing. The responsiveness is great and you'd really need it to be for drawing and painting, right? And even while connected over Wi-Fi, the latency was relatively low. Speaking of connectivity, you can hook up your iPad to the computer either through a USB cable or through the magic of Wi-Fi. That's right, you can enjoy some home scale portability with this. Photoshop from your couch, man, oh yeah. Of course, how well this works does depend on the quality of your Wi-Fi network. They do recommend that you connect to a five gigahertz band for optimal performance. I get varying latency like with a good network. It sits between six and 16 milliseconds, but I have noticed moving around to different Airbnbs that that range can increase quite a bit. So I prefer to just have things hooked up by USB and I get an average latency of two to three milliseconds, which is still really good. AstroPad Studio has got full Apple Pencil support, so you're getting a really smooth pressure sensitivity. So smooth. And a really smooth tilt response. So smooth. There's no third-party stylus support anymore, so just keep that in mind if you are considering going the AstroPad route. You'll notice this trail line following behind my pen as I draw. This is an interesting fix, particularly for those times when you do have slightly increased latency and your actual paint stroke lags a little bit behind where your pen is. This trail line will indicate where your stroke will appear while the ink actually catches up. You can adjust the length of this, the color of it, and if you don't need it at all, you can just 
turn it off. Generally, my cursor isn't all that far behind my pen when I'm connected via USB, so I just turn it off. If you push this here red button, go over to your pen settings, you'll be able to customize the pressure curve as well. I tend to prefer a slightly softer pressure feel, so I just shift the points around to, to suit that. Now I don't have to press as hard to get a bold stroke. Then there's the workspace, and I really like how AstroPad has designed things here. And it's another way that they're making your iPad really feel similar in functionality to a regular Wacom tablet. The workspace has a set of shortcut keys along the side, and these are pretty much the express keys that you see along the side of most drawing tablets today. Of course, they're fully customizable, so you can set them to match your most used shortcuts in whatever drawing or painting software you're using. And they're per app, so you can have one set of shortcuts assigned for Photoshop and another set assigned for Blender. AstroPad will automatically pick up when you switch between those programs and change the, the shortcuts accordingly. I did have a couple of instances where those shortcuts didn't automatically change, but then I will just tap the app icon over here, select the app that I want to be using, and it would change over. So it wasn't such a big deal. Then there are these quick keys at the bottom. These have been around since the beginning of AstroPad, but initially you only had four of them. They were fixed, set to your specific modifier keys, Control, Alt, Shift, that kind of thing. But with a recent 5.1 version update, you get an additional seven customizable keys. These can be hidden or shown independently of your workspace as well. And if you only need one or two of your modifier keys, you can easily hide the rest. To customize them, you can either use AstroPad's on-screen keyboard, or if you have a wireless keyboard connected to your iPad, you can use that as well. Alrighty, touch gestures. Now, since getting the iPad, this is something I've become really used to having, and you don't lose that with AstroPad. There are the usual suspects, you know, two finger tap to undo, three to redo, punch to zoom and rotate. One of the default magic gestures that I particularly like is with one finger on the screen while drawing, you activate the eraser. It's a really simple thing, but I quite like how they do this. There's also two and three finger press while drawing, and you can customize these as well. What's different here is that while you can't assign mouse clicks to your workspace side panel or to your quick keys yet, you can do it with your magic gestures. So for example, in Blender, which uses the middle mouse button quite a lot, you could say have two fingers on the screen while drawing to activate that, and you can easily rotate around your objects and around your space. Let's talk compatibility then. AstroPad Studio works with most popular drawing and painting software. Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, Illustrator, Paint Tool Sci, Critter. If you tested out Project Blue and Critter together, you may have noticed that Critter was completely unusable. A lot of the strokes weren't registering. Whatever that issue was, it's been resolved and Critter works flawlessly now. I'm mostly working Photoshop, had no issues there. If you are into 3D, then you'll be happy to know that this works with Blender and ZBrush as well. I'm still a total Blender noob, but playing around with some basic modeling, I found that it worked pretty well. I know they are working to improve Blender support at the moment, and I think where things will really shine is in the sculpting side, where you can take advantage of the Apple Pencil functionality, that pressure sensitivity. Let me know in the comments actually if you are using AstroPad with Blender and how that's working out for you. Jumping back to the display quickly, I'm used to working with a dual monitor setup, so I'll have one screen as my main painting screen, and then the other, I've got my reference material, YouTube, artist interviews, that kind of thing going. AstroPad on its own only mirrors your display. That's fine for some, but for those who do prefer dual monitor setup, AstroPad has a dongle for that. Their Luna Display dongle will turn your iPad into a wireless extended display, and it pairs really well with, with AstroPad. It also works to extend PC or Mac to another Mac, or you can use your iPad in headless mode with the Mac Mini or Mac Pro. It's pretty cool, you know, you have the hardware versatility that Luna Display brings together with the creative solution that is AstroPad Studio, you have a pretty solid combination. Okay, so this all looks good, right? Next question is, how much does it cost? For a monthly subscription to AstroPad Studio, you're looking at $15 per month. If you pay annually though, you get a substantially reduced price at just over $8 per month. It's not that bad of a price if it's something that you know you're going to be using a lot. For pretty much the cost of a Netflix or Disney Plus subscription, you're getting a really well-designed bit of software to improve your work and give ad versatility to your iPad, something that you've already spent quite a bit of money on. If this is something you'd only use casually or if you're a beginner on a tight budget, then I'd recommend rather looking at Easy Canvas. It's quite a bit cheaper and has a once-off purchase option. You're not going to get as good image quality as you do with AstroPad Studio. It's not as customizable as what you get here, but at its core, turning your iPad into a drawing tablet, it does the job pretty well and it's also available to Galaxy users. 
So that about covers it for AstroPad Studio for Windows. I'm really impressed with how this works. You know, having spent quite a bit of money on the iPad Pro already, having software that gives it some added versatility for the kind of work that I do is great. It's got all the features and customizability that make this feel like a miniature Cintiq Pro with the addition of the shortcut buttons. I am more inclined to recommend this to more professional artists and designers, people who need that added versatility and who maybe don't want to give up more precious desk space to a separate drawing tablet. If your iPad can do it all, then why not? The real question though is, can this replace a dedicated graphics display tablet? And I think depending on the kind of work that you do, it could. You're getting the features that come with a pro-level tablet, that customizability, the multi-touch, and a really good quality stylus. A dedicated display tablet, purely as a piece of hardware, is likely to have a slightly better edge in terms of responsiveness and latency, but AstroPad still is really good in that regard. With the iPad though, you are limited to 12.9 inches for now, which is fine, I think, between 13 and 16 inches is kind of the sweet spot with drawing tablets. If you are going to be using the iPad as your main drawing device, whether in standalone mode or together with your computer, I do recommend getting a good stand for it just to you know, help with keeping decent posture and not straining your neck. At the time of recording this, I know they've got their Darkboard Pro stand in development and I'm curious to see how this is going to differ really from something like the Sketchboard Pro that's already out there. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm going to stop talking now. You can let me know what you think of all this in the comments. Does it tick all the boxes for you? Could it be or is it already a solid drawing tablet alternative for you? I'd dig to hear your thoughts. And until next time, thank you very much for watching until the end. I appreciate you being here. I hope you found this interesting and insightful. And if you did, you know where the like and subscribe buttons are. That's all I got to say. Ciao for now.